Gene editing is a new form of creating genetically engineered crops, and it is cheap, and it is easy. And this means that the number of GMOs that could be introduced, not only into our food supply, but into the environment, can be catastrophically large. Now, one thing about GMOs, including genetic gene editing, is that it's prone to side effects. The most common result of genetic engineering is side effects. Now, the biotech industry wants to pretend that its new gene editing is safe and predictable and just like breeding. And they've convinced governments, uh, some, in some cases, to turn a blind eye. But I'm going to share with you the real truth about gene editing. I'm going to describe seven things that can go wrong. You'll see scissors on the screen. Gene editing, like for CRISPR, has two components. It has a genetic molecular scissors, and it has a guide that looks for a match along the genome. When it finds a match, the scissors can cut. The first problem is there are many things along, many places along the genome that are very similar to the target, either exactly the same or similar enough to cause cuts in the wrong place. You can have hundreds of cuts up and down the genome from this process, and that means you are making changes that were not part of your predicted model throughout the genome. Now, once you've cut the gene with your tools, it's the cellular mechanism that repairs it. And you have no control as a scientist over how it's connected. You hope it's connected in a certain way, but it can cause deletions and additions and scrambled genetic information reversed. It can cause all sorts of problems in the repair. So you'll see on the screen a little red section. That's kind of a Pandora's box as to what it's actually going to be, and it's often it's outside the control of the scientists. Now, sometimes, in the case of something called chromothripsis, the gene editing shatters the chromosome, which when it gets reformed through the genetic repair, it can be completely scrambled. There can be large sections of the chromosome missing, and chromothripsis is linked to cancer. Now, when they gene edited mice, they inadvertently put in genes from cows and goats. Now, they weren't intending to. They didn't bring in genes from cows or goats. So how did it happen? The serum that's used in the Petri dish to house the genome of the mouse they were working on, the serum was from goats or cows. And there were little pieces of DNA floating around in there. So when the CRISPR cut the genome, it just grabbed DNA from nearby and stuffed it in. So now there's retroviruses from cows and goats and other material in the mice completely accidentally. And when they were working to create hornless cows, cows without horns, they said, oh, the horns, it worked perfectly because the offspring have no horns. Let's create a herd and, may, and replace the natural cows. It turns out two years later, someone from the FDA happened to be just testing a software program. They had all the data from the so-called perfectly gene-edited cows and found that bacteria that was used to smuggle in the gene-editing equipment into the cow's cells had ended up being stuffed into and integrated into the cow gene genome. And these particular genes were designed to create antibiotic resistance. So that means if you ate these cows, you might be exposed to pathogens that picked up these antibiotic resistant genes, and you might end up with a serious, perhaps deadly, disease. So when this came out, they killed the herd, but it's an example of 
one of the problems of gene editing. Now, there were mushrooms that were genetically gene edited to knock out the gene that causes browning. So you can slice the mushrooms in advance, sell them as sliced mushrooms, and no one knows that they're genetically engineered because they don't have to be labeled as such, but they won't turn brown. So they lie about their age. They're like Botox mushrooms. Now, when the company sent a letter to the USDA asking, do you need to review this? The USDA said, nope. See, they, they don't pay attention to gene edited stuff unless under very, very rare conditions. So this loophole in GM food regulations means that these mushrooms could be introduced at any time. Now, two years or so later, after this abdication and this letter saying, but we don't have to look at it at all, a study was done on knocking out genes, which was the same technique used in these crispered mushrooms. And it turns out knocking out genes only works one third of the, uh, and actually has mistakes about one third of the time. It fails one third of the time. And in some of those cases, the genes that are supposed to be knocked out continue to produce proteins that are truncated, that are not the full protein. They're smaller. They have a different shape. And truncated gene, truncated proteins are known to call, potentially cause allergens and toxins. So no one in the United States had to review these gene edited mushrooms. They approved it without anyone looking to see if the protein was in fact completely knocked out or truncated. And if it had been introduced into the marketplace, it could cause serious diseases or death, potentially. Now, another way that gene editing causes problems is when you put the gene editing equipment into the cell, you can use a gene gun or you can smuggle it in with bacteria. That process creates insertion mutations throughout the, the genome. Now, once you have inserted your gene into a plant, you then clone that plant, clone that, clone that to a plant. So you insert it into a cell, you clone those cells into a plant. The process of cloning creates massive numbers of mutations, hundreds or thousands. And so that's another way that you're creating problems that, are, that don't come from natural reproduction. Now, many people have heard of epigenetic changes. In addition to changing the genome consciously and intentionally so that offspring inherit the new gene structure so that you create a plant and then all future plants, for example, or all future animals or mosquitoes, etc., are also genetically engineered. There are changes to gene expression which are often completely unpredictable. And these too can be passed down from generation to generation. So you can, you can turn on a silence gene, you can increase an allergen, a carcinogen, a toxin, inadvertently in your gene edited organism and their offspring and their offspring and their offspring will have the same unpredicted change. And this was tested in mice and that inherited epigenetic change lasted for 10 generations. That's when they stopped checking. So it could be far more than that. When a letter in Nature described the results of CRISPR gene editing of a human embryo, they described it in the title of their letter as chromosomal mayhem massive deletions, missing chromosomes, insertions. It was a complete disaster. And when you're thinking about human gene therapy or genetically engineering humans, the scientists pay very careful attention to the sequences that they create through gene editing. But the, in agricultural biotechnology, they typically ignore the sequence of the genes. 
They ignore changing expressions of other genes through epigenetic effects. They ignore protein, uh, whether they're intact or not. All they want to know is if the agronomic trait that they're trying to get, make it round up resistance, make it so it doesn't turn brown. If that works, they'll put it on the market without doing the safety testing. And so the issue is it's an extremely dangerous practice. And yet industry has convinced so many governments to deregulate gene editing or certain categories of gene editing in the United States, Australia, the UK, Brazil, Argentina, Japan. They're putting pressure on the UK now, on, on the EU and on Canada. And we need to stop this because if you imagine how quick, cheap and easy gene editing is and how it's prone to side effects and how once you release these GMOs into the environment, you cannot recall them, future generations will be at risk for our folly of replacing nature. This generation's mandate, now that we have a technology that can so easily redirect the streams of evolution for all time, we must protect all living beings and all future generations. It is the mandate of this generation because we are the ones that, have, that are around when this technology has become available. It may have been totally inevitable that the technology was going to be in the hands of human beings, but it's in the hands of companies like Monsanto Bear that have no regard for safety and humanity. And with the governments being convinced by people, by groups like Monsanto Bear, they now allow gene edited kits on Amazon. Last I checked, it was $169. Now, if you spend a one or 2,000, you'll have the ability to buy by mail order for the price of dinner, a particular input to create yet a new gene edited organism. So it will be used in biology, high school biology classes, college biology classes, home kits all over the world. Millions of gene edited organisms could be introduced. Mm -hmm.